Um, I, I guess one last nutrient that I want to want to touch on, and I'll I'll ask the question from a physiological standpoint, Mark. So this one's coming at you. Uh, I'm going to try not to stumble saying it, as I typically do half the time. Um, molybdenum. What, what what do you got for comments on on that? Because I I know it's talked about um, quite often mentioned, say with with boron. Uh, you you hear it in conversations, but can you share a little bit around that? Yeah, that that's a good one. It's and then again, that one really doesn't get a lot of attention. But if we actually look, uh, um, and this isn't a product pitch, but if you look at our product called Flex, it actually has molybdenum in it, and and we've stated this before. Flex was actually specifically designed for Western Canada, and one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is back to what we've seen in tissue analytics. Um, for the last uh, five years and that nutrient it didn't matter whether it was canola or wheat um, or peas or chickpeas or whatever we continue to see a significant um, response or uh, a significant incline in the data of deficient uh, being deficient in molybdenum so um, interesting enough um, you know it's definitely something that we should be looking at and having a conversation around Molybdenum's, you know, your nitrogen um, utilization uh, nutrient. It helps enhance uh, nitrogen specifically um, in pulse plants. Um, part of the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to fix that atmospheric nitrogen into useful nitrogen for a plant requires molybdenum. Um, so this is a nutrient that can have a negative or can have an impact on pulse crops specifically, but it's also a nitrogen uh, utilization. Uh, nitrogen efficiency uh, nutrient for canola, for wheat, for barley, for oats. So definitely one that doesn't get a lot of uh, attention, but it's come up in, in the analytics that we should be maybe having conversation around that. So 